can't believe that we just found that. Uh, I think we found another geocache, hopefully. That's just junk. I thought it was a geocache, but it was just an old pillbox with that. <laughs> Need to find the trash can here soon. Oh, I think I did find one more though. Right over here. Or is that foam? See, the foam board is another one that always gets me. As it looks... Oh, whoa. What in the world? Oh, that's a bed mattress, I see. I think somebody's been camping out here. See a bed mattress right there. Maybe that was their old pill bottle or something. And then that is definitely a piece of foam board. So. Yeah. It looks like maybe like a bag with some clothes in it or something there. So, all right. Well, I don't think there's anybody living there anymore. All right, well, very interesting. Found a small little encampment with some old stuff from uh, people. Uh, apparently spending the night in a little uh, discreet camping area. I don't know. Sometimes you find though that people do that as a hobby too. Not all of them are actually homeless. There are some extreme campers out there. And so who knows what that situation really is. But I think we're going to skip back up to the front here and also over a little bit, you can hear a lot more gunfire right now too. But uh, we're gonna try and check out another Woodman of the World and then maybe find our old Philander grave and see, um, see what we can postulate about it this time around. Uh, maybe we'll find some new insights here. Something that we didn't maybe see before. Some pretty historic looking stuff here. Really difficult to read once again. I can't even see it on camera this time. Okay, on the back, maybe it just looked like it had an inscription on there. Uh, you can see Sarah Ann Vandala. Another one that I think is somewhat prominent family wife of uh, W.M. Anderson. But see, there's also a Vandola road around here, too. That's, it's like, like, really, I think they're all, like, right in a row. Like, I think that Gump is this way, and then, like, Vandola is, like, a couple roads that way, and then there was uh, the other one, um, now I'm drawing a blank, uh, and it's, like, the road in between back there so it's kind of interesting but again I would have to look up the information I, I again don't really know other than the roads why they were prominent families in the area they might have been business owners or developers maybe I'm not really sure and here's our woodman of the world here and another pretty unique one. It's like they requested a branch to be kind of split in half, but not fully disconnected, you know. Sometimes they have stuff like laying down or even like animals or things like that. And uh, yeah, so it makes me again think there was a lot of uh, 
personal requests that people can make with these and have them, you know, well, personalized, you know. So, um, another really historic one, 1833 to 1888. Looks like Sarah I can't read is it Sarah Bailey maybe? I think it's Bailey. And oh let's see. Maybe it's a uh, Wamsley. That's interesting, I'm not really sure. That's hard to uh to read. And then next to it, there is a small marker that probably says, it looks like maybe Mother, I see it looks like M-O. I, I think it says Mother, it's really hard to, to read again. I think this one is actually unrelated. Now for Ben Grant, I think these are actually just dirty because they really should be fairly easy to read and, and you can tell the difference uh, maybe this is like a really bright vibrant pink and blue and black and and uh, right here you can see where the lichen has kind of grown and faded the color a bit so definitely something that could be easily brought back so all right, let's continue along to the front here. This is slowly getting back to where we started. I know, again, we haven't seen everything, obviously. It's actually a pretty big place, as you can tell. I'm not sure how many um, burials there are here. I think it's probably in the thousands. So, yeah, there's no way that we can see everything, although do want to go back for a ways now because I have spotted what appears to be, wow. This is pretty consistent. That might be construction. It sounds like, it sounds like gunfire though. An interesting little family section here. Looks like uh, Reuben Ulam. of the 17th Illinois Infantry and I don't know if that's Colonel or what their rank was. Somebody let me know. Sorry, I need to get better at my military ranks. And then see his wife here, Annette. Annette? It looks like Annette. Should be an interesting, interesting name. Okay, so this is another unrelated Zella B, wife of J.G. Warden, but I don't see J.G. Warden anywhere. Maybe it's in a row behind, perhaps. And then I believe these are children here. You see one year and six months and then 13 years. But oddly no names, but they might be on the top here. And just have faded over time. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything in the back. So, and these are all family name Otto, looks like 1855 to 1880. 1825? 52 to 1921 and then 1888 to 1920 and Josie Otto and another interesting just a sideways stone it says Schlatler and it's interesting that that's like right in that place oh that, okay it does say Otto on the back that's right so Probably a combined family stone there. And then it looks like an Indiana, yeah, Willard A. Warner, Indiana private in uh, the 159th Depot Brigade. 
January 21st. Does that say 1937? Hmm. Let me know. I'm not sure what depot brigade means. If that's something to do with artillery, maybe? That's kind of what I'm thinking. But again, let me know. And let's see if this... See, we have the wife of J.G. Warden, uh, Zella, right there. Let's see if maybe this is, this is a very similar colored stone. No. So, another one that maybe they were either remarried and buried somewhere else, or their marker has disappeared somewhere in here. So, I don't know. It's a difficult one to uh, answer. All right, we're gonna walk down this road here to the front. So I'll cut back here in just a little bit. Okay, so we're at the very front here. You see the front three rows. So we'll kind of uh, scope through that for a little bit and see if we can locate this historic grave. Wow, there's a, oh, I think that's somebody's burning a fire in their backyard. I thought a house was on fire for a second. 1879 here. I'm having a hard time. Willings, maybe? I can't tell. That's a very difficult one to read. A lot of these are hard to read, unfortunately, but again, Feel free to uh, try your best and let me know what you think. I'll, and I will obviously do the same. I see uh, John Oppenheimer. Hippenheimer? Hippenheimer, it looks like. February of... Oh, born February 1813, and there is no date of passing. So if anybody sees him around, let him know. And then on the back, we have Elizabeth. And that actually is fully filled in. You see, 1819 to 1883, it looks like. Here's another Hippenheimer. Eighteen fifty-two, it looks like, and eighteen sixty-three. And the only bit of damage is the uh, little flower vase below. All right, let's see if we can continue forward here and find this. Should be not too far. Mary Walton and William, or no, excuse me, W.W. W. Williams. Just realize his name's full initials would be W.W.W. Let me see, William W. How oh, it is William W. Williams? How crazy is that? From 1826 to 1906, uh, marked with a flag. So probably a Civil War veteran. Definitely not War of 1812. Could have been some other conflicts in between. I would hope more for the Civil War. Let's see, uh. Oh, I thought that was, I was looking at the camera screen. It looked like a misprint, but that's 1849 to 1812 for Peter Hostler and Catherine is 1861 to eight, 1933, excuse me. That one had a little bit of lichen growing right in between. And so it looked as if it actually was an eight and not a nine. 
just incredibly historic. And I'm, I'm so surprised that this gate has survived as well as it has. And such long sections of it. Um, makes me wonder if they've ever replaced any of it, or if maybe they even prepared for that and had... Um, I wonder if that's the same place. No, that's not. That's a different department. The 1875. I'm trying to keep my eyes out here because it's coming up here really soon. And they're 1880 and 1863 there. Looks like both Parkers. Let's see. Uh, I cannot read that. 18, maybe 47. So I'm getting, but I'm not 100% sure. See, it looks like Manville Dunton, 1839 to 1918. And then something, Mary, it looks like Mary something. It says a last name, but I can't really read it. It looks like 1877. And I thought that was a little bit of damage, but it looks like it's actually part of the design and maybe a an inlay of roses or something. All right. I'm pretty sure it's in the first row here. And if I remember, I'm not positive, because I, I did try to look up some information on it last time that I was here. And so I think that, oh, here's another veteran, but I think that, uh, he might not even be buried in this cemetery at all. Let's see, uh, John R. or John Rainey. It's like Corporal of the 83rd Indiana Infantry. And again, no year, but most likely Civil War. Again, another one that has quite a long bit of poetry there. But I don't think that one's as faded. I think really that one is actually just needing cleaned. Uh, but you know what? I think our stones may be this row back here. Uh, fairly large. I don't know if these are considered obelisk because they have the rounded tops or I think it's all the same. But 1815 to 1885 there. And Jane Hunter. You see the Sydney Hunter. 1840 to 1898. So probably a child. And more on this side, that's really difficult for me to read. I'm gonna have to try and get that later. I think we're gonna have to head that way, maybe. Some damage here, and then there's something behind it. I don't know what this... Oh, it actually... Okay, well, I don't want to risk damaging it, but this is actually a, a marker right here. That's a, one of the free little metal headstones. But I don't want to risk uh, actually uh, damaging it any further. And actually, I was wrong. I just spotted the one I was looking for.